part two of 7th of February 2023. I don't know why, but my stupid phone switched off again when I went to show you the photo. Here's a photo of Beauregard with Charlie beside him. <clears throat> bizarre how that switches off I didn't touch anything so technology struggles people technology struggles I think I am declining into dementia so yes 2021 two years ago I was worried about oh it's three years ago now isn't it time's marching on I think I'm declining into dementia I just spent several seconds repetitively pressing buttons frantically on my TV remote, trying to turn off my air conditioner. I seem to do this often lately. Also mix up names of my pets and talk to myself a lot, although I have very good conversations with myself, so there is that. I had a test for Alzheimer's last year, passed with flying colours, Yet, oddly, I do not feel well. Something has changed in my brain. Harder to synapse after waking up. Harder to maintain focus during the day. A stark reminder that my life is limited and precious. Must be gentle with myself. I don't want to end up in those holding pens for death called aged care facilities, shitting in my adult diapers. Yuck. So, um, although I had a very bad night last night, very interrupted sleep, actually for weeks and months now, I woke up synapsing very well this morning. That's nice, probably because it was cooler in my, ro in my room here. A good day is when the Tanya wakes up with her brain synapsing on all four channels. It usually takes me, on average, about an hour to kind of wake up and think clearly and integrate after waking up in the morning. So yeah, today was I was astonishingly crystal clear. And even though I look like I'm not coping because I'm making this video in my nighty, I'm actually quite could ring a bell in there so that's actually a good thing I like my brain to be crystal clear 7th of February 2020 it was the day before Gisela's birthday when Lynn and I decided to visit Wellington Point hmm Dialta Hexa wanted a visit with the Tanya the old witch that means Lynn and I had a nice time though. It was the first time since Gisela died that I visited that place without paroxysms of pain. Grief finally sank back down, but the anger still arises occasionally, such as life. And uh, here's some lovely photos on farm. Lynn and I with Beauregard at Wellington Point. Just get a better view of that top one. <laughs> I mean blowing blowing kisses to Lynn. So there's another photo after this one, so I'll just scroll down. I hope the bloody thing doesn't um, blip off again. The iPhone, I mean. King Island, formerly Phillips Island, where my bastard pervert progenitors are scattered. And here's the view across the beach at low tide where you walk out to King Island. It's a beautiful spot. So we first um, scattered Uncle Case's ashes there because he loved the sea. All my family are 
seafaring type folk so he loved the sea so much we put him there then when mum died I put her there to be not far from him I actually put her on the other side of the island though because they they kind of loved each other but hated each other and those weird relationships that lasted 23 years and then when dad died I thought well he was so enmeshed with them and so vicious and colluded with Buckshire against me his own daughter I mean, the, the treacherous bastard. So I thought, well, they belong together, don't they? Like a matching set. They can float around together in a ter for eternity. Their bones and ashes, that is. So I um, put him on the, the most northern part of that island, further away from Mum and Kay. So that kind of forms a, a triangle of evil. <laughs> I did that quite unconsciously, people, but I didn't want to put them, except I couldn't remember exactly where I'd put mum in case anyway, but I didn't want to put them in exactly the same, you know, vectors of that island. I thought, no, they get their own little spot on that island, but they're together, if that makes sense. Anyway, I haven't gone back there. I, it's, um, as I said there, I felt great peace and and. It's like the grief had finally slipped out of me, but why go and rip open a Band-Aid, you know? So I haven't gone there since, really. Probably should go again, because it's a beautiful spot, but it is like ripping open a Band-Aid. Last time I went there, I went with Beauregard, and um, so would, that would have been tw maybe 2022, I'm not sure. I mean, it's been a few years since I've been there. And I had this sense of this energy following me as we were walking off the island and all these weird kind of spiritual things happened, like weird encounters with some children on the beach and just odd things. So I went and did a little um, meditation, little put a prayer up to the gods, to the Holy One and the gods that um, my progenitors were to leave me the fuck alone for the rest of eternity and... That energy had to stay there on the island. It wasn't to follow me home or follow Beauregard home either, for that matter. But anyway, it's all very, very odd that his health went into decline the following year. So maybe, maybe they did attach to him, but they couldn't get to me. Who knows? Anyway, so there's, a, there's another reason to avoid that place. There's quite a few spirits there because it's um, traditionally a place where people take their beloved one's ashes. I'm sure I'm not the only one that deposited my family members there. So there is that. 7th of February 2019. I just had a couple of mild hysterical conversions. Mild in that I did not need to lie on the floor to have a fit but felt my vision go blurry and hands go numb. I was not even hysterical. That's the odd thing about those. They come on so suddenly and you don't even know what the cause is usually. First time I had one was uh, two months after September 11. So I went to see a neurologist because I thought I'd developed an epilepsy and I was really freaked out about that. And I, he said there was nothing wrong with my brain. He scanned my brain and said, no, it's um, diagnosed it as hysterical conversions. And there have been quite a few people coming in with that problem in the ensuing months. And I thought, oh, that makes sense. Because it was a collective trauma, really, watching those two towers go down. And I had already dealt with very intense trauma at that time period with ex-lovers and rotten family, the above-mentioned ones. So I had a lot going on. So that was the tipping point that tipped me over the edge, which is understandable. But anyway, I haven't had one of those for a long time, but here we are mentioning it in 2019. I was not even hysterical just reading my status updates and other stuff. Yeah, that'll do it to you, Tanya Aarons. Hmm, must be the heat. Better drink more water. 
I haven't had those in a long time. Weird. Brecky Tit, who's my friend in Holland, wrote, there must have been a trigger. Try to find it so you can heal it. She's quite right about that. Well, the trigger is my entire fucking life, isn't it? One big trigger after another. Like a tsunami wave that keeps slamming into me. But never mind, I've learnt to be a very good surfer, surfing my own flotsam and jetsam life and rebuilding and trying to make something of myself even at this late stage. It's very courageous. I'm a very, very courageous woman. And I deserve the best that life can bring me. And that's not ego talking either. It's there's been enough crap. I suppose it is an ego thing to want things to work out at long last. It's also a fantasy, but anyway. Even though the universe named my dog after Violet Beauregard, which I unconsciously transmitted to him, more like Violet Beauregard, winky face, but where were we? Yas, not sugarcoating shit. And that's in response to a meme I posted. I don't sugarcoat shit. I'm not Willy Wonka. <laughs> if you ask me my opinion on something and I happen to know the facts of the matter, you're going to get always the uncomfortable truth. I won't sugarcoat shit. Life's too short, people, to live in denial or delusions or obfuscate or lie to yourself that everything's okay when it's not every now and then you've got to just stand on the top of a tall building and scream it's not okay <laughs> what are we gonna do about it well there's been a lot of that going on in the last four years hasn't there people of earth none of it was okay 7th of february 2018 10.41pm, pain very bad or less tolerance at night after suffering all day. So I am in my Epsom salt bath absorbing magnesium like a bitch. I managed to hang out some washing which was fraught given how painful my leg is. You know, you'd think my daughter would have come along and said, Mum, I can see you're in a lot of pain and struggling. Can I help you do a few things around the house? No, doesn't give a flying fuck about me. They're just so lazy by nature. They really are. Anyway, changed my bed linen, which was stinky from sweat and deep heat, which is the only deep penetration I get nowadays, and staying that way too. Sense of humour slowly slip sliding away as there is nothing funny about living alone in chronic pain and shit. But all good. Tomorrow is another day and after that another and I just keep dreaming my psychedelic dream of living a serene life surrounded by loving, life enhancing people across the border. No. I'm probably never going to make it to Byron Bay either because poverty people. So the loving, life-enhancing people surrounding me will have to manifest here in Brisbane. That's an immense fantasy and a dream. But I am seeing it. I'm seeing it starting to unfurl and manifest beautifully. So hold on to your dreams, people. Walk with your gods, walk tall, walk proud, hold the line. Your people will come to you eventually and realise that you were right all along and deserving of great love all along. And they'll start waking up and recognising you and your spirit, by the way. The only thing <coughs> keeps me going some days my vibrant imagination and my heartfelt desires to be loved and prosperous and healthy. 
but even if I can't be prosperous and healthy, it, it's, it would be lovely to at least be loved, right? In my weird, quirky ways, I know. I know I'm an acquired taste. In fact, that is probably how I survived my family of origin, a husband and the detestable creeps that came along after my divorce. <clears throat> Living in the Tanya land, Kabbalistically manifesting a better, safer life. Oi, here I am, 23 years later, 29 years later. Still fighting for my sanity and for my health. Well, my sanity's pretty good these days, people. Ever since I went off the psych med six years ago, I've, um, I've improved in leaps and bounds. Holding on to what's left of my shredded life and my <laughs> severely altered brain from trauma and 15 years of psych meds will do that to you. Warrior of light and might. Daughter of capricious, treacherous gods. I yield to ye. I am satisfied that you brought me my nephew to bring much needed love and closure. That you brought my beloved daughter home safe. She tells me she'll be going back to England as soon as possible to put on a play. I can't rely on her to be much of a fixture in my life. Tanya Le. I had an instinct this trip home was a long goodbye before she left me permanently, or I leave her. Still in all, her life is her own, and frankly, mine was never much valued. A family history cursed down upon my head by my grandmother Eva, who suicided at 54 in a fit of peak in depression in post-war Germany in 1949, having lost everything on, in the bombings, including her husband, to TB in 1945, literally on my birth date, 12th of April, 1945, he died, and she suicided on the 8th of March, 1949. So... It is believed she was not meaning to make a serious attempt, but the gas in the oven got to her before she pulled a fucking violent, evil, psychotic head out. Eva had bad lungs from her own TB infection. Probably was another reason she wanted out by taking back control of her own demise. I get it. So my mother found her like that when she came home from work and her fiancé, who that morning, with the cold, clammy cruelty of youth, had told my grandmother to hurry up and get on with her threat to suicide. Lived with the guilt forever after, or until he knocked up his boss's 18-year-old daughter with twins a few short years after my half-sister's birth. <laughs> yeah, I come from a long line of assholes, biological and non-biological. That was my, my half-sister's father, so he adored me, that man. He was very kind to me, ironically, and uh, his Twin, one of his twin daughters, who I am in contact with, adored him, said he was the most wonderful father to, to her and her twin and um, her step-siblings when, when he remarried his third wife. But um, <laughs> he was a bastard to my grandmother and my mother, quite frankly. You know what, he came out, they came out, him with his third wife, um, Susie was her name, and they came out to Wellington to visit. I'd, um, I'd only just got married, so it must have been 
it was before I had was it before I had Crystal I think so she was born in eighty five. I got married in on the twentieth um, of May nineteen eighty four. So they must have come up that summer, you know, um, December time. There's a photo of us all swimming at the beach in Oriental Bay. So yes, must have been summertime they came out. And um, he was so lovely to me, but my mother still had an intense love or connection or frisson for him. As soon as she walked into my, we walked into my sister's house to um, to meet up with him again. He he and my mother just locked eyes on each other, and it was like no one else in the room existed. It was really embarrassing, and they started this intense flirting with each other. And, sitting close together like long lost lovers. Susie just went and sat in the other room. I have to say Susie was very cool about it. I would have been livid if it was me. And my sister was like also a bit confused by it all, looking very uncomfortable. And I just sat and watched the whole thing play out in front of me. It was like watching them being in love when they would have been young before they had Angela and before all that ugliness happened. It was like watching two young, young, well, they weren't teenagers when they got together, they were in the early 20s, but yeah, it was like watching young love unravel in front of your eyes. It was like a bit fucking astonishing, people. I've never forgotten it. And I kept looking from one, from one to the other, to Angela, even to my husband, Michael, going, what the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck? And, um... Yeah, only Angela and Susie didn't seem phased at all. She probably expected it, you know. Maybe she was just sanguine about it, but my sister was phased, very phased, and I was just astonished. They were clutching each other's hands and looking into each other's eyes. And my mother had professed so much hatred towards him for decades, so I was like, what are you doing? So that is the power of your first love and I suppose your first s sexuality. <laughs> don't ever expect me to behave like that with my ex-husband though. I don't hate him per se anymore but I'm just, I've reached the point of indifference and I certainly don't have that kind of passionate memories of <laughs> so There'd been there would be none of that. But anyway, it was a weird, surreal experience. But as I say, Hans Peter was very kind to me. And um, I look a lot like my mother, of course. So he would have been looking at me thinking, I fucked up. This could have been my child. And um, yeah, there is that. But anyway, life goes on. They're all dead now. And all we have are these funny little quirky memories and anecdotes anyway I continue writing tomorrow's my mother's birthday or was you know when she was alive <laughs> next month are the anniversaries of my father my mother and grandmother's deaths and my father's birthday also but wait I just have to get through February 1st. Even better, get this pain to stop after all the epic bullshit I have suffered in life. Now I get the undignified, ignoble gift of being in chronic pain until I die. How very, very rude is that? So just for this moment... I give myself permission to be angry about it all. About my failure to thrive from birth to middle age. <laughs> and about, well, it wasn't all my failures. It was inflicted on me by monsters and psychopaths. So there is that. I must stop blaming myself for all my failures because a lot of them weren't actually my fault, you know. And about my unfulfilled dreams of true love and Byron Bay of a loving family and abundance. I would stomp like a stumped out Rumpelstiltskin until I fell into another hole. But you know, 
My leg won't allow that to happen. I can barely walk, let alone stomp or dance frenetically anymore. But look on the bright side. I had some fun before I died. I bet the odds by surviving all those evil, perverted motherfuckers. And I may still squeeze a few good years out of my miserable life yet. I never expected to be around this long. I am one determined woman, beautiful, strong, and a wise ass. Hang on to my Volina Gutkas. It's still going to be a bumpy ride, but I will get there. Update 2019. This time, a year later, I'm experiencing muscle weakness but much better from the weird nerve, uh, than the weird nerve pain of a year ago. I think I might just get better as I age. Mm, one can only hope. Denial is a long river in Africa, and hope is a state of hubris and a bit of a salacious hag. But miracles happen, and you know, I have no options but to hold on for the allegorical much vaunted, better times are coming, my auntie Sylvia always jeed me up with. So here we are in 2024 and this time it's not nerve pain in my leg that I'm dealing with, but nerve signalling in my bladder gone berserk which I have been dealing with for about eight years now but um here we are darlings fighting the good fight every day functioning as best as I can in the circumstances 9 21 a.m awake less than five hours sleep really bad night again feel wrung out with the constant pain barely holding on some days, nearly out of Lyrica, which does little, but helps me sleep, although last night it did not even achieve that. Anyway, happy thoughts. The wind is up and the day is relatively cool. The sun is shining. I have a block of chocolate, beautiful pets to cuddle, and some lovely friends and one daughter. Well, now I no longer have my daughter, either of my daughters in my life. And most of my pets are dead, except for little Charlie. So ever-diminishing returns, people. It's getting fucking scary. But here we are, fighting on day by day. Life has potential to get better, and there will be bliss again. And my friend Terry Collier wrote... I saw you at Woolies yesterday. I called out, but I don't think you heard me. I replied, Oh, I didn't see you or hear you. Was too focused on getting milk and bread and limping on out of there. Hugs. Also, I often disassociate in supermarkets. Please forgive me if I did not see you. It's not personal. I literally leave my body and zone out. I did it yesterday when I was in the supermarket. I was like, within about five minutes of walking through the doors, I'm like mentally gone. It's so hard to get groceries, to focus on getting the groceries. I have to force myself, think about what I actually need and get the hell out of there as quickly as possible, which is hard when you're stuck in a queue, right? My, my urge is to just get in, get my food, get the fuck out. And it's never as simple as it sh could be or should be. But it was quiet there last night. I got there about 6.30 and uh, there was hardly any stock on the shelves, which is alarming, very alarming. That triggers me too when there's no food available. And um, yeah, it was... Uh, very fucking confronting that also causes me to leave my body as well 
It's like... Anyway, I had to remind myself that at that time of night, um, they probably still haven't stocked the shelves properly and there isn't actually a lack and I don't have to panic. But I started panicking people. I really did. So I had to talk myself down. 2012, no, 2012, sorry, 2.12 a.m., Still unable to sleep due to bursitis and or tendonitis in leg and hip. Arg, this is so frustrating. I just took another Mobic and Lyrica to help ease the inflammation and nerve pain. I just realised both those medications sound like Serbian time lords. Dobro, dobro. I shall overcome including my weird sense of the absurd. My friend Louise Winton wrote, O oh, Tanya, you're having such a rough, painful time. I hope you feel better soon. Kiss, 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 kiss. She's my Irish friend who lives in Manchester. Jewish lady. Very loving and supportive of me also. Seventh of February, two thousand and seventeen. I have really sore legs and feet from the heat. I did a bit of watering, pruned back some of the cardamom, pulled down a dead tea tree and dragged to the, dragged it to the side of the house. Cut down a banana tree that had fruited. I cut one down yesterday too. Put ice packs in the hen hen house for the night topped up the fish ponds, cooked rice and a few stir-fry veggies for dinner, now exhausted. I have joined couchsurfing.com but don't have $28 to verify my profile. That will have to wait until next payday on Tuesday. That was under pressure from my daughter. She thought it would be a good way for me to, you know, have people in my home and meet nice people. No, it was too too triggering for me. I didn't feel comfortable doing that, so that didn't last. I had one person come to stay, and that was it. Nice young Frenchman. He was very polite and cordial and pleasant, but, yeah, um, no, not my bag, having couch surfers in my house. Mushu came home. I washed his wound with saline. He ate a bit, then ran out again. I'm still very worried about him. This morning the tooth that caused me so much agony started hurting again. I'm due to see the QE2 dentist on Tuesday the 14th. I must have been clenching my jaw in my sleep for it to be sore again. I spent the night, I spent the heat of the day resting and did all those odd jobs after 3pm when I had a burst of energy. I feel a bit nauseous tonight. I didn't have much appetite, so I had a shower and I'm now resting again. 7th of February, 2016, 4am, home from another night dancing. Fiona asked me to walk her over to Irish Murphy's. She told me it is under new management, new security, and I could come back. They were always trying to lure me back to that space. Don't you know, you can never go back to the scene of a perfect crime, to quote Concrete Blonde. They shat on me so many times. Why would I ever want to give my energy to that space ever again? Seriously. There was no loyalty and respect for me when they banned me so... Mm -mm, fools. I said, nup, I have a hex on that place. They abused me too many times and got away with it. Even the state government covered their ass when I wrote a formal complaint. Now I will not rest until they go broke. Well, I have rested. I don't fucking care anymore, but... 
I was angry for many, many years after that about how I was badly treated there. Just like I'm angry still with the Treasury Casino for easing me out just after my dog died in that vicious, low calibre, cowardly dog way. But casinos never go broke. It's too many suckers. But anyway. When I crossed over the street, Nathan from Jabba was walking past. I used to support his band as well as Burst every weekend at Irish Murphy's. I used to ramp up the energy on my spot near the door with my wild tribal dancing. Together with their great musicianship and my frenzied dancing, the place used to be packed to the gills. He told the head of security my name. He approached me and stated I was welcome back. I said, Nup. I have had a permanent ban placed on me for the injustice of asking for protection from my assailants on the dance floor, which was an outrage. He said, we are all new security. I am head of security. You have nothing to fear here. So fucking condescending, really. The cheek of it. I stated, you don't understand. I fear nothing and no one, but I have a curse on this place of vomit and piss and sexual abuse. You could not pay me enough to come back here after the evil way I was treated when I had been good for business, doing my thing every weekend and with my hypervigilance from my CPTSD, I was keeping the girls safe notifying security when I saw men getting too sexual with my group of young women for which I was banned. He said, that wasn't my company. All those employees are gone. I said, but management is the same? He said, Macca and Robbie are gone. Interesting. Scum never lasts long. Actually, I really liked Macca, and I thought Robbie was okay. So it's funny how they all stabbed me, not just in the back, but right in my face too. I said, but the owners will be the same? Question mark. He agreed. I said, tell them. I have a curse which will not be lifted. I see how business has gone down the tubes since they let me be fucked over. I, can, I can't honestly feel sorry about that. You allow good women to be abused over and again. You deserve to go broke. He said he will come talk to me at the casino. I smiled as if I will change my mind. I am amused, however, that my curse seems to be working. The place was a shadow of its former self when I was there, stomping in my sexy boots and dancing wildly. I wonder, when did any of my hexes ever work? This will be the first. I know several other women who were attacked there, so word gets around and my magical thinking a pox on that establishment had nothing to do with it. But they are stupid. They have no idea who they mess with when they try to destroy a good woman. Yeah, my temper can be extreme, but only if provoked. I lay down and beg for no man, woman or child and no business either. I still remember a year ago when they absolutely publicly humiliated me 
by serving me a drink, then asking me to leave. They still took my money. Evil cunts. I don't use that word lightly. So I will do what I always do. Look after myself and go where I please. I was wondering why suddenly I was being courted, laughing my ass off, even using Fiona to drag me over there. I mean, that's just infantile and rude, using my own friends to try and seduce me into going back to that dark death den of rape and sexual assault. And even one man one time when I was dancing there suicided. <laughs> no one gave a flying fuck. It's an evil cesspit, that spot. It really is. But I poured so much energy into that pub that even now there'll be fragments of my soul still floating around that space, watching and waiting for its demise. I'm a very, very good woman, but I'm a formidable enemy. Just saying. Anyway, I'm 51 in April, now almost 59. I can't dance like I used to. I staggered to my car barefoot because security at the casino wouldn't let me take off my shoes. I know, occupational health and safety, but again, I use my noggin. I only take off my shoes when there was no crowd around me, and anyway, I am sober. But rules are rules. They harassed me, then let other women dance on their bare feet, mofos. That's the thing, it's always inconsistent. They'll penalise me, but they'll let someone get away with the same thing. Like, it's just crass, just fucking knuckle-dragging, gronking Neanderthal fucking idiots run that space. So my dancing days are almost over. My feet can't deal with the pain threshold. This was back in, um, what year was this, people? Where were we? I think it was 2016, yeah. 2016 and then 2018 I had all that trouble with my left leg with the nerve pain and that but I actually believe I suffer from um, Lyme borealis symptoms they don't acknowledge that there's Lyme disease in Australia which is another fucking evil because I've I've been unwell for many many years now and I think it's Lyme disease or a, a form of Lyme disease can't prove it because they won't test for it, but I think that's a big part of why I've been chronically unwell for many, many years, as well as my other issues that I have going on. But I think the nerve pain relates to all of that, or damage caused by the psych meds. It's very possible too. But anyway, here we go. My feet can't deal with the pain threshold and here I am, 2024, still dancing people. That's how important it is for me to dance, be wild and free on the weekends and to have that bit of exercise and that one night out in the, in the world, which I don't always cope with. Like I had two vicious little bitches harassing me on Friday night again. They've done it before and they were back with a vengeance. It's the, the lovely security guard stood between us to um, unspokenly let them see that I have protection and they backed off. But yeah, it was most unpleasant. And um, I get people envious of me and see me. This little old lady, short, fat hobbit woman with her nerve pain and her aching legs and a broken fucking heart, stomping my wild triumphant dance. They're jealous of me even having that much. That's how evil and debauched 
some people are. Anyway, the dance continues and every Friday night is my wild shamanic dance in the face of all the evil spirits from my family of origin and all the seeping evil in our society and our global world. I dance my dance no matter what, no matter who, no matter how, unless I'm so ill that I can't dance, which happens on rare occasions. I force myself out there. The only time I didn't go was when I had the COVID in recent months. So there's been a few times when I wasn't feeling too great, but once I'm out there dancing to the music and I have a couple of drinks and um, I'm on the adrenaline high from the epic dancing, I revivify myself, darlings. Then I go home completely written off and exhausted and rest for three or four days. But the dance continues. It's getting very hot in here all of a sudden, even though the aircon's still on. I might just retire into oblivion, not yet, babies, and get my exercise walking Beauregard instead. At least he will appreciate and value me, smiley face, which he did. He was a lovely dog. 7th of February 2015. I write a comment. Well, I held my head high and faced my enemies off. Then I left and drove Brian, which was a homeless friend of mine, to a mate's place so he has somewhere to sleep. He wanted to come home with me, but I couldn't bring him into my home because he was quite sweet on me and he was quite mentally unwell and I didn't think I'd be safe bringing him to my home. And that's the tragedy. He could have lived here have a spare room he could have lived here and you know as a flatmate or something but I'd seen him too many times in strange psychotic states and I thought no I'll get raped or murdered in my bed so the tragedy is I didn't feel safe to provide a home for him and he was my friend so I used to wrestle with that quite a bit and felt guilty about it but um he eventually did get his own place, I was told, and uh, was no longer homeless. And I never saw him again, so I don't know if I was lied to and he actually died or what happened. But anyway, I was very fond of Brian. He was very kind to me. and uh, But he understood He understood when, that I couldn't bring him into my home. He didn't hold it against me. It was only me that suffered and felt guilty about that. I lost my gold brooch, which was holding my dress together and which I have owned since I was 15. So that was bloody upsetting. I rang lost property. Maybe someone decent will hand it in. I live in hope. Any gold I lost at that casino was quickly snatched by someone, by the way. Lost a lot of gold jewellery in, in my years of dancing there. In the end, I stopped wearing my good stuff to the casino. It wasn't worth the grief. Living through interesting times, some epic nastiness from spiteful, envious women. Karma, karma, karma. I hope those two bitches rot in hell. Yes, I do, even to this day. I hope they rot in hell. They caused me so much damage, including aligning with a man I was greatly in love with and worm-tonguing him against me. Well, that wasn't hard since he was a piece of shit as well, so there is that. But no, they were evil. They really were. All three of them, actually. Evil beyond belief. These rabbis are really corrupt, sad to see this level of abuse in my own religion. 
I would never have believed this. It has been harrowing to see the extent of pedophilia, even in Jewish life. I hope and pray that the Royal Commission will make radical changes to our society in the protection of all children, now and into the future. Well, they haven't, have they? Two million children a year are still being abducted and sold into child sex slavery across the globe. Watch the sounds of freedom. It's heart-wrenching and astonishing, but it's really happening, people, on a daily basis. Never forget, never forget what's happening to innocent children. And the bulk of the, the children are taken from, you know, places like El Salvador or other, other underprivileged countries or from Asia and sold to Americans. America, you have a massive pedophile problem in your land. You better clean the fucking house. The fish rots from the head down, by the way. Clean your fucking house and start protecting children. But it's not just Americans that are doing this. It's, it's across the globe, people. It's evil, utter, debauched, perverted evil. Anyway, my comment was in response to an article in theguardian.com. Head of Jewish school did not know he had to report child abuse. Inquiry hears. That was a school here in Sydney and it was absolutely an outrage. He didn't even think that it was worth mentioning. It's filthy. But it doesn't just happen in Jewish homes and schools. It's happening everywhere, even as I speak. So that was my war. I fought that war a long time. And um, only in recent last couple of years did I stop fighting and armchair, adv doing armchair act activism and advocating because I realised... Nothing changes, and I'm old and ill, and it was debilitating my health. And um, nothing really changes. If you watch The Sound of Freedom, you can see it's going on to this day. So I hand the baton on to someone younger and fitter and more stronger to fight that fight. It's, um, it's a fight that needs to be continuously fought the war on pedophiles and protecting our children. And I speak as a survivor of child sexual abuse. I'm what's left after your life's been totally ruined when you're six years old. You're looking at a survivor. Chronic ill health, chronic mental ill health and the filthy betrayals of people that you fall in love with because you keep choosing bastards because all you know is bastardry imprinted into your brain as a young child. The stain remains but I've cleaned my house, I've washed myself clean I even at one stage went in a mikvah to cleanse myself of David Davidson's filth and treachery. And I fought hard in my own community for our children, by the way, for which instead of being, you know, receiving a bit of gratitude and admiration, I was vilified to the point of suicide, people. That's how rotten and evil our Brisbane Jewish community is, by the way. But I can hold my head up high and I can sleep straight in my bed at night that I at least put in the effort to try to protect our children. No one protected me or my children, by the way. 
when we were being threatened on a daily basis at Waterford West. No one. Evil it was. 3.35am. Jared and Crystal spent the afternoon and evening with me. Then I went to the casino. My stalker attempted to harass me unsuccessfully as I have written proof that I have told her to cease and desist. The woman really is an idiot. No, a psychopath is what she is. Got away with it too. I'm so sick of people getting away with causing me damage to the point that I almost fucking die. I'm sick of that too. Mama T is drawing a line in the sand. The bull rocks can keep coming for me, but ye shall not cross. I cast ye down into the abyss where you belong, you filthy fucking fetid animals. And you know who you are. Some of you probably still watch my videos. Seventh of February, two thousand and fourteen. I'm in the mood for love, so I'm out having a nice solo dinner at Jackpot Noodles. Then we'll be next door across the road at Irish Murphy's. This was before it turned to shit, by the way. No love is there, but I enjoy the music and dancing regardless. Up and at him, rise and shine. My hair looks like. Who's that? I thought I saw someone walking past, but no, that's odd. Oh, sorry. My hair looks like I inhaled Philistilla, then took acid. Hilarious. Time to have a shower and adjust my coif. Sherry Paris wrote, Tell you how to fix that, and I do this every morning. Bend over at the waist and just fluff away with your fingers. Flip it back over your head and fluff again. Then wad it into a bung. Ta-da! You're due for the day. Me, lol. I had to wash it, now tamed it into a side plait and gone out for the evening. Yay! Uh, I'm just going to pause for a moment because I have to take my tablet at 10 a.m. and um, it's, it's not working, this bladder medication's not working people but um you have to take it at the same time each day and um otherwise it messes with your um neurons so um same as psych meds had to take it at the same time each day and believe me if you missed your psych meds you re your brain really did do a little bit of a hissy fit or a loop the loop so um, I'm back to being on medications, which I do not like and I'm not happy about, especially since it's not exactly working. But um, I see my psych today at 2 p.m. I've got a debrief and I'll be telling him that it's not working and he'll be bitterly disappointed because he's the instigator of all this, sending me to a private urologist and paying for it. Is determined to keep me alive and healthy, right? Love you, Brian. You're a wonderful doctor. Here I am, being a compliant patient, putting poison into me that I do not like and it doesn't work. So you can imagine my rage right now. While I'm here, I'll take my vitamin D. Vitamin D. And, um, oh man, I just poured them all over the table. Oh, well, all over the bench, I mean. Here we go. 
I have to fix this up. Yes, Charlie, Mummy loves you. Right, three vitamin Ds. My fatty liver doesn't process vitamin D very well. And I increase the dose because I'm trying to avoid the COVID and madness. And um, literally didn't stop me from getting COVID in October, but I, I presume it gave me enough immunity to um, not get it as bad as I could have gotten it. And my folic acid for my hyperhomocysteinemia that I earned by being threatened on a daily basis in Waterford West for 18 months. Apparently only CEOs of very large companies get that. That's the level of stress we were put under and how my brain got reconfigured. So, right, we're done. I've taken my vitamins and my medications. And it's all happening in a far out way. You want to come with Mama? Come on. We're making a video. No? Hurry up. Come, come. I know. Come on. Come with Mama. Come on. Okay, you don't want to come? You can stay there. Did you change your mind? A birdie has a right to change her mind. Everyone's got the rights to change their mind, Charlie. Come, come. Come, my darling. She can't make up her mind. Come on, let's go. We're going. All right. She plays this weird little game sometimes where I have to fight to get her to come out of a cage. I don't have time for that this morning. Ain't nobody got time for that this morning. Uh, anyway, it's just that she was calling out, so I thought she wanted to come out with me. Right, are we still filming? Yes. So still in 2015, I think we were up to. Were we? Sorry for that interruption, by the way. Oh, 2014 it was. But yeah, the, the, the tablets have to have to be t dealt with, have to be. I have to do it. I, I don't like it, but I have to do it. Just woke up to cuddles from Penny. Best cat ever. Light of my life. She really was. Oh, I miss her still. No kisses this morning, though. I got a happy little half mule. Sounds like she's saying, Mum or meh, lovely girl. She did talk, by the way. She did, did say a few, what very much sounded like English words. She waxes impatient now. She wants me to get up, so we will enter the madness of another afternoon, evening. So it was my morning, but it was late afternoon. I plan on going out tonight I feel stimulated after the lovely show and dancing last night. Weird siren going off. It's probably up at the school. Found my magnifying glasses in my bed. Yay. Eyes. Woke up after only four hours sleep. Was just Facebooking and drinking tea when I heard an almighty row in the chicken coop tractor. Tabitha, my heart swells. Was beating up a scrub turkey who was in there stealing the fresh grain. I just put out for them. First time she has ever gotten cranky about her food supply being stolen. The outraged crowing was hilarious too. Never mess with an angry redhead 
who's come back from the brink of death twice. That scrubber got quite a shock laughing my ass off. Gail came to visit me last night. She bought a gold class ticket to see the actors Tig, Juice and Bobby from Sons of Anarchy on March 28th. She was so excited. She went home and ordered a silver ticket for me so I could come too. I am delighted as I love that show so much. I'll be able to sit in the audience while Gail gets to schmooze with the actors. I am happy to be able to go with her. I was just going to drive her there and pick her up, so it's a great surprise that she bought me a ticket to go too. You never know what cool people we might meet while we are there too. Exciting. I had a wonderful day. I got up at 3pm, drove to Lynn's to spend a few hours with her and got a surprise call from Crystal with the offer of a free ticket to see Rocky Horror Picture Show at the Lyric Theatre. So I drove to the city, saw the show with Crystal, Seals, Robin and Aaron. Then they went on to the Three Monkeys and I went to Irish Murphy's to dance. Robin gave me a feather boa, so I wore that to the pub as well. Lol. Joe bought me two drinks, which was sweet of her, and we danced and had a lovely time. Then Crystal picked me up and drove me home as she is borrowing my car tomorrow for her teaching job down the coast. Only sour point was I lost my glasses then had to use a broken pair to try to see the actors with. And then, on the way to the pub, I must have lost the broken pair. So now, no glasses. I'm writing this with a jeweler's magnifying thingy on my head. And it's not working so great either. So I will have to find an optometrist that bulk bills and get a new script and perhaps new glasses. I still need to replace my glasses, which I cracked here and you can still see where I glued them up. I don't give a fuck. But I'm probably due for new glasses soon anyway. I notice these are not quite, well, don't know whether it's exhaustion or if it's my eyes have changed again, but they're not quite as sharp as they could be. And maybe it's my imagination. But on average, I get new glasses every two years. Um, Not being able to see is driving me completely mental. I barely passed the vision test for my driving license medical yesterday, so my eyes have deteriorated in a year. Meh. Ageing is not for sissies. I hope they turn that fucking siren off soon. It's driving me bats. Seventh of February two thousand thirteen. Sick. Slept till three thirty p.m. Exhausted. Sick. Blech blech. Had an upsetting debrief with my doctor, so trying to come to terms with that. Not happy, Tanya. While he is monitoring me due to my condition being on the edge, he also instructed me that I should continue to enjoy my freedom and happiness. This is great encouragement, but also an appalling double-edged sword. I guess if I tip over the edge into full-blown madness, I will never be free or truly happy again. This is a big fear of mine, people, going completely mad, which fortunately, fortunately hasn't happened, but you know, it's a worry. Skirting around dementia at the moment is a worry too. Because this new drug, he says, can cause or bring on dementia. Fuck my life, seriously. So enjoy life while I can still cognitively rationalise that I'm enjoying it. Fuck my life. 
exactly what she said back then. I finally get free of my evil past, start truly enjoying life for the first time, and then I'm told my mind is about to snap, for fuck's sake. Oh well, there is my destiny, always to be elevated in one level and then torn to shreds on another. Will Hashem ever decide if he's going to ever let me live a safe, comfortable, happy and truly loved, valued, respected life? Or am I forever to be the victim of his great vicissitudes about my soul journey? I suppose I should be grateful and happy that I got to have two months of real joy and freedom before I finally descend into madness and or death. It does seem such a small victory over my oppressors to finally be happy and free, only to lose it all again. I am so angry right now that even this is a pointless waste of emotion when my happiness quotient is about to be ripped out from under me. So what will I do now? Be happy. Update 2021. Be happy. Ignore the errant button pushers. It's a hobby for them like pulling wings off flying Tanya's, then bitching when she falls. Nasty. But I rise and shine, sustained by the divine, daily. Ah, oh, the wonderful sound of silence when that horrible alarm stopped going off. Sweet to God. 7th of February. 2011. Update 2021. 10 years of toothy hell. When will it end? Smile. You've been candidly cameraed for free. It's my dark sense of humour, people. I had my root canal work redone, redone today to expunge the cyst, which was the size of a pea. It hurt like hell, even with the anaesthetic, as the endodontist, who looked young enough to have just graduated from university, had to keep pressing down hard into the canal. He told me there was a ledge down there, which made it more complicated to get to the actual root underneath. It, so it all sounds like my teeth have been completely fucked up by incompetent idiots at the public dental hospital over the years. But, unfortunately for me, there is nothing I can do but try to persevere and get correct and proper treatment. The good news is I have two appointments in the first week of March, one for the other massive filling and a few days later for the root canal work to be completed. So don't expect me to be in a chatty, chipper, verbose and toothy mood in March, lol. The quote from the private dentist so I could get an implant in my front tooth, which has been bogged beyond belief by the public system and is a complete mess, is $8,099. I'm only covered by the care plan for $4,200. So frustrating as I will have to wait until I inherit enough money or win lotto, so I can have perfect teeth again. The upside was, the new private dentist wrote a pretty stern letter to the public dentist system, so at least they have done the urgent 
and necessary preliminary work, i.e. root canal and fillings for free. So at least I'm not walking around with a permanent abscess, wondering why my lower jaw was tender and swollen and feeling extremely tired all the time. That's how bloody incompetent they were. They couldn't diagnose that I had a cyst. Like, what the actual fuck? But anyway. Here we are. Another day in paradise. It's now 10.26am. And thus concludes my readings of even date. And um, I'm going to go and, um, yeah, get dressed and get ready to see my psychiatrist. At, it's not till 2 o'clock, so I've got plenty of time. But um, I'm going to move through this day in and out of ordinary reality. I can feel myself all fuzzy now, almost like I'm outside of my body, kind of in a vague disassociative state which I get like after reading my journaling being re-triggered and reminded of all the agony I was put through by incompetence and bullying, systemic bullying and viciousness it's very triggering for me but here we are so far so good my teeth have behaved in the last 12 months I mean I still get terrible jaw pain here and um, occasional pain in my TMJ joint too, but I'm okay. Jaw-wise, I'm okay at the moment. It's just now dealing with the bladder issues. And, um, yeah, living each day with great dignity and aplomb and hoping to find my true love partner one day. Who's going to want to take on this broken down old boiler? No one, darlings. Let's be real here. But anyway, I can live in fantasies and hope and have my little sweet little platonic romances that can go nowhere and I can still enjoy my wild dance. And I can still live my very best life, even though my very best life is a waste of power compared to most other women on this planet. I'm fighting a good fight every day to have a good life, a happy life and a loved life. Could happen one day. So, to you... From Titania's realm at sacred space, hold the line, hold on to your true beloveds, friends, family, lovers, partners, pets. Enjoy each day with them. Every day is precious and um, we should be surrounded by those who truly deeply love us. We, the royal we and you. The royal you. Every mortal deserves to have love in their lives and people who actually genuinely care about you and respect you and fight for you and have your back, as my psychiatrist has done for me for many years. Even though back in 2013 he was a little bit button pushing, I don't know what even that was about. He was probably tired and needed a holiday. We all need a holiday sometimes. But he's a good man and he's fought for me a long time. He's seen me come off all my psych meds in June 2016. And he's seen me fight very, very hard, even through this COVID epoch the previous four years, for my self-determination, my body autonomy and for my peace. And I'm still fighting people every day in every way. I'm still fighting for that much. That's the bare minimum. I want my body, autonomy and my peace. 
and everything else and everyone else that comes into my life with true heartfelt, heartfelt honouring, loving intentions. You, my darlings, are a bonus and I appreciate and value and cherish all the genuine, authentic love I receive from good, kind, noble, decent, honouring souls. So much love goes out to you in the eternal infinity symbol spiralling to and from you in a constant loop of connection and authentic love and uh, as I always like to remind everyone never ever let the bastards grind you, me, us down. Live triumphantly, live joyously, live wildly and freely with harm to none and competition with none. Be your own version of awesomeness. To those vicious young women that harassed me on Friday, well, they don't watch my videos, but they'll feel the energy. Go be awesome somewhere else. If you're writhing with envy and spite towards little old me, I've done nothing to you except dance my dance. And if you can't bear to see a little old lady dancing her triumphant, defiant, wild dance of freedom, then fuck off and go be awesome somewhere else. Live your best life. Don't writhe with pettiness and envy of someone else who was also living theirs. So, on that note, shalom. Have a gorgeous day, people of Earth from Titania's realm.